check. So, check, check, check. What about the sound settings? Does everything look all right? Hmm, that's the question. Yeah, <laughs> hey guys and girls. <laughs> I'll wait a couple seconds till we've got the first viewer here. Oh, Chuck! <laughs> Oh, Chuck, <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> I just wanted to say I'll wait a couple of seconds till the first person appears on the chat. And there you are, just a second later. <laughs> nice to meet you here. Yeah, uh, I'm quite excited. Um, let me maybe ask you, is the, the volume okay? The relation between my commentary and the, the game music? It's actually the first time I, not just the first time I stream, but the first time I really play this version of the game. I just took a, a very short look at, uh, at the uh, closed version earlier. Music is a touch loud, so maybe I can do it a bit down. Let's see if it's better now. Okay, there is no music at the moment. Come on, music. I, uh, I, I think it might be better. What do you think? Of course, we also want to enjoy the music because uh, one of the outstanding points about Adam is this fantastic music. And I already heard on this starting screen that there are uh, certain certain themes from from the old Adon that were used again. Maybe up a little. So let's try to get it into the middle between what we had before and what we have now. So, like this. Oh, that's excellent. So, uh, we can already take a short look at the starting screen. Here we see the Hi, Pete! Welcome to the stream! Here on the starting screen we see the entrance of the Caverns of Chaos and already looks very, very atmospheric. The, you see the, cha uh, the chaotic glow from the entrance. This might be our hero, probably. Step through the snow towards the, the location where we'll experience this big adventure. Hi, Paolo, and hi, Hocus the Pocus. Welcome to the stream. Yep, uh, Paolo, we just started. In a couple of seconds, this will be my first time playing the new Ultimate Adon. <laughs> Can't wait to see it. <laughs> so, what uh, what do we have here? We can We can watch the intro. Let's do that. Show us the intro, please. <laughs> of course, uh, all of us. It is a sequel, indeed. This is the new game that uh, Thomas Biskup and his team have been developing throughout the last years. And just last week it went online on Steam. It's uh, still the... Um, what was um, the, the, the... 
uh, early access version, so many features are not yet implemented into the game, but as far as I understand it, it's already very playable. There should be 20 dungeon levels, there should be a tough boss fight at the bottom, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to experience it for the first time. Of course, all of us know this unknown hero that faced Andor Drakon was not that unknown. His name was actually Uvelion. But uh, maybe that's not well known with the narrator of this introduction. What else do we want to do? Although, ah, one could say that we have a little bit of experience with Adom, let's still start the tutorial because I have no clue about the user interface and the controls of the <laughs> phrase Ovelion, yeah, about the user interface and the controls of this new Adam. Let's take a look at that. Don't fight with an empty stomach, that's an excellent piece of advice. So, use the movement keys indicated on the map to move your character. Alternatively you could, oh I was too slow. I could use the mouse, but I don't want to use the mouse. It's a roguelike, I play it with the, with the keyboard. So it's, oh it's WASD. Day? Yeah, okay, we do that. Excellent. Let's take a look at the user interface. We're playing a uh, dwarf in this introduction. His name is Dwarjalf, level 1, lawful, neutral. Lawful neutral. Okay, that's a bit more D&D style probably. A mountain dwarf fighter with decent DV and pretty decent protection value if we can still apply our knowledge from the old Adam. Start with 53 hit points, that's a lot. No power points, no experience points. Satiation points, oh, we've got the satiation right on the screen. That's cool, and see this nice little carrot here in the corner to indicate the satiation, I like that. And also the corruption can be seen right on the interface. <laughs> uh, what do we have here? This is the indication of the zone where we currently are. Caverns of Chaos T0, which means tutorial level. This is the speed shows the number of moves you've made since the start of the adventure. That might be interesting if we might go for a speed run at a later day. Gold is not yet available. What's this? Inventory limit. Uh, 0, 6 and 21. What does that mean? The inventory limit shows your inventory limit. Oh, that is a surprise. Including items that are actually equipped and the contents of your backpack. This game counts your encumbrance, how much you can carry, based on the number of your inventory slots taken up by items. Okay, that's a new mechanic, that's interesting. The six taps above, uh, six taps, six taps, six taps, I don't know yet. Uh, I just know the third tab. I have not yet clicked on any of the other ones. So let's see how encumbrance works in the new Adam. The total total amount of right now you are carrying six items with you. For your current encumbrance level of unencumbered, you can carry between zero and 21 items. So that's the meaning. Zero is the lower limit of this encumbrance level, 21 is the upper limit, and six is what we are currently carrying. Hi Vikos, welcome to the stream. <laughs> yeah, I missed the, the moustache too, but uh, I can ensure you that my wife is very happy that it's gone. <laughs> I have not yet any opinion on Ultimate Anum because it's the very first time I really take a look at it. Right now I'm completely blind. Um, the following encumbrance levels exist, followed by the number of carried items that will put you in set encumbrance level. Crushed at 175, that sounds pretty deadly I think. Overburdened, 51 or more. Very strained, 44 or more. 
strained 30 or more, burdened at 22 and unencumbered 0 or more. Your carrying capacity is mainly determined by your strength, your raw ability to lug stuff around and dexterity, your ability to pack things effectively. That's interesting too. So dexterity now has an effect on our carrying capacity. Ah, that's possible, we will see that very soon. Additional skills and magic items can further influence this. Finally, medium and heavy armor can modify your current encumbrance level due to the, uh, to the bulk they put on your body. That's very interesting, that's a totally new mechanic. The statistics are still the same as they always were. Strength, willpower, toughness, appearance, magic, learning, dexterity, charisma and perception. Nothing new in that regard. We can maybe take a short look at the descriptions. Strength is important for hitting enemies in melee, dealing damage with melee weapons and your carrying capacity. It has minor effect on health. Okay, I didn't know that. Interesting. Learning is important for gaining experience using scrolls and wands. Okay, it's also important for wands now. Ah, we have to take a look at all the statistics now. I think there are some changes, even though it's the same names. Scrolls and wands, as well as having a minor effect on your amount of power points. A high learning empowers some spells. Oh, that's very interesting. Willpower is used for resisting magic and enemy effects, such as paralysis and confusion. It has a minor effect on health and power. Power is the magic, I think. Yeah, power points, this. And it seems like it no longer has an effect on spells. That was the case in the uh, old Adam, where willpower was very important for the range of your boss spells. Dexterity is very important for hitting enemies with ranged weapons as well as dodging traps and blows. A high dexterity will also slightly improve your overall speed. And as we learned earlier, it is also important for carrying capacity. That's not mentioned here. Toughness has a major influence on your maximum health. That was to be expected as well as your rate of natural regeneration. That's new. A very high toughness also provides some protection against blows and some enemy effects, such as sickening. Okay. <coughs> I think the new thing is the effect on the regeneration. Hi, Gatlane. Welcome to the chat. Welcome to the stream. The bottom of the screen may be getting cut off again. I think that's the case. Thanks a lot for letting me know. I have to correct that. Um, yeah, it's a bit. Does it work like this? Wait, does this look good? Almost, almost there. A little bit smaller. So now it should. Uh, now it should be perfect. I think. Thanks a lot. I think this should go. The game is paused, aha, because I tapped out. Interesting, and uh, the pause screen shows an adventurer taking a break. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, charisma. Now it gets interesting, because charisma and appearance used to be uh, not the most important stats. Appearance got a bit uh, more interesting after it gave protection from chaos, but let's see if they changed anything on these statistics. Oh yeah, I am too. And that's what we are just doing right now. Now, Charisma. Charisma is important for negotiating with certain creatures in the Caverns of Chaos, including shopkeepers. It also has a chance of calming non-hostile beings into becoming aggressive. Non-hostile beings into becoming aggressive, preventing them from be becoming aggressive. Uh, oh, my, my English, <laughs> maybe calming means the same as preventing in in this uh, context. 
And that's very interesting. That's also maybe, maybe very helpful in the game. Appearance has a major effect on prices for shopkeepers and other prices charged by certain beings in the Caverns of Chaos. It also has a major effect of calming newly arrived enemies into being non-hostile at first. Aha, so if you want to play a diplomatic character, a peaceful character, you better make sure to have a high charisma and appearance. Perception directly affects viewing distance. That's always been the main effect of perception. It also modifies the range damage and is used to dodge unexpected traps. Range damage, aha, because dexterity was only important for range to hit. So high perception seems to be essential now for, for ranged fighters. And mana, finally, mana is linked to the maximum power you can control as well as power point regeneration and power point gain per level. It also has a minor effect on certain enemy attacks. Oh, as you can see, uh, all of these stats got a bit more complex. They have effects on, 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 on many aspects of the game and we have to keep that in mind. So what else do we have here? Open the game log. Let's do that. Here is the game log. We can show only important log entries. We can show standard log entries, everything is shown, and combat log entries if we want to see how a fight went. That's interesting. Let's, let, let's take the standard settings for now. The action menu, aha, the action menu. That seems to be something important, but I am almost sure we will learn about that in the tutorial. We can jump. Let's jump. Oh, did you see that? Our dwarf just jumped one step into this direction. How far can he jump? Let's try that. Can he jump two squares? Yeah, two squares is the maximum. So he can absolutely jump over obstacles. Very interesting. Nice, nice. We jumped two times. And finally, okay, jump is now down here in the, in the, is that a command list? With X we get to the to the lock. With E we get to the to the action menu. With F ah with F we get to our inventory. But let's not do that yet. We want to do that in the tutorial. We are we are, we are spoiling the tutorial. So, little dwarf, go over here. Open the door. Move into the door to open it. Yes, we did that. Open the door by pressing E. That was the alternative option. But I'm not sure if I will be able to learn to press E. Can we walk diagonally if we click here? Yes, we can. Can we also move diagonally? Ah, oh, damn, I don't think so. Maybe, no. I think he didn't even move diagonally. He goes here first and then there. So we might as well just use WASD for movement. See up here is the minimap. I think, uh, yeah, this classic roguelike style. We've got a compass on the minimap. And here's a button for auto exploration. Auto exploration, everybody who saw my crawl videos knows that I use it a lot in that game. In Adom, uh, it's a bit, uh, I'm not just not familiar with it. I, I used to play it when there was no auto explore feature in the game. Now we start to fight, if I get that right. I missed the message. What did it say? Do what? Uh, I think the message has disappeared a little bit too quickly for my taste. I, but I'm almost sure I know what we have to do. This is the test dummy. It has 10 defense and 10 health. Let's beat up this test dummy and see what happens. Bam. Okay, one shot. Ooh, and there is a pile of blood on the ground from the from the test dummy. <laughs> Interesting. Sometimes something will block your progress or otherwise fill the room, like the wooden pillar ahead of you. Fixed structures can be attacked and potentially damaged by double moving into them. Try it out. Okay, let's try it. Double move. That was some damage. Double move. D 
double move. If I move just once, it doesn't work, but twice, then it works. Okay, we did it. Other decorative features in the dungeon, like the coffin next to you, can be smashed by pressing E, again the execute action command, and selecting the appropriate command. We press E, and up here we have the command smash the coffin. Let's do that. Bam! Oh my god, a skeleton came out of the coffin. An orcish skeleton, to be precise. This orcish skeleton, chaotic and evil, has two points of protection, 13 HP, 12 defense value. It's nice that we can see these stats directly. It has a strength of 13, dexterity 9, appearance 6 with a malice of 2, learning 9. It has a full set of stats. Interesting. Your eye, my eye? Is something with my eye? I don't know. <laughs> or do you mean the eye of uh, our hero in the tutorial? Um, skeletons are immune to possession. They have a little bit of magic resistance. Can see through darkness. That's good. That's good to know. <laughs> uh, unaffected by bleeding, confusion, critical hits, death. Poison, sleep, and stun. No, 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 it's not blood. It's an exclamation mark above the head of the skeleton. Uh, skeletons never retreat from battle because they are undead. It's uh, convenient. They regenerate one hit point every 35 turns, one power point every 20 turns, and it is equipped with an iron longsword and a small iron shield. This thing is not quiet. Its bones clack in its joints and its teeth chatter. But it moves by some unholy force. Did dark magic pull it from its well-rotten slumber? Does it hunger or want? Does it know of its purpose, of why it wields weapons again? Questions, questions. Hi, Scale Painter! Welcome to the stream! And yeah, Ultimate Adon! <laughs> oh, Celery! So Scale Painter is now actually Celery. Oh, that's interesting. I recommend to everyone, everyone to check out Scale Painter slash Celery's art. Excellent work at uh, painting these uh, little figurines. So, let's see if we can kill this skeleton. Attack. Yes. One hit, two hits, and the skeleton is killed. It dropped some stuff to the ground. Let's take a look at that. Here is a pickup menu. Let's use that. Pick up all items, pick up the sword, or pick up the iron shield. We pick up all items. And uh, this might be a good idea, situation to now take a look at our inventory. Um, we don't have headgear on, no necklace, but an iron chainmail, minus 3 plus 5, a battle axe, 1d6 plus 6, and 31 is the, the attack power in combat, uh huh. Attack power is probably the to hit chance, I think. Plus 40% with a minimum of plus 8 hacking, I don't understand what that means. Plus 40% 40, 40 damage. Or to hit or everything? I don't know. This X causes a base damage of 1d6 plus 2 hacking in melee combat. Aha! There are certain different damage types now. It provides a 300% damage bonus when fighting wooden targets in melee. Oh, the weapons got a lot more complex too. I like that. It can be engraved with up to 3 runes. The chainmail does not have... It, it can also have runes. Aha! The thick leather gauntlets can have one rune and they have one point of protection. We don't have eyewear, so our characters can now wear glasses. Goggles, very interesting. 
The hooded cloak plus one defense cannot be uh, in Crave's runes. Monsters drop the equipment they are wearing indeed. Which absolutely makes sense if you ask me. But I'm looking forward how this is balanced in the game. I want to see that. This girdle does not have any function but can get a rune so even an ordinary girl might have some special functions. Oh yeah, scale painter. I am extremely uh, hyped about this game too. Yeah, absolutely, Paolo. So it might make sense to train several weapon categories for specific monsters. Hi, CGM. Welcome to the stream. So we don't have we don't have a second melee weapon. We don't have a ring. And we have a pair of leather boots, which can also be uh, engraved with a rune. Missile weapon? Nope, we don't have a missile weapon. So, what do we want to do? This uh, iron longsword has 1d8 slashing damage. The iron axe had hacking damage. The sword has slashing damage, so maybe it is better against certain enemies. And the attack power is 23, while the iron battle axe has 31. I think the battle axe is usually the better weapon. Okay, let us should we equip the should we equip the shield though? It gives plus two protection. I think we do that. I think we just drag it over here. And now we are wielding the shield. Excellent. Can we see it? Yeah, here. In his hand. In the hand of the dwarf is a little shield. So let's continue. I think I see a ring on the ground. You found something. To pick it up, either click on the item's icon or use the F key to open your inventory. The F key, so no more apostrophe and comma. Let's press the F key. Here on the ground we see a ring and it is indeed a golden ring of defense. What does it do, this golden ring of defense? Let's give it a try. Equip this ring. I want to pick it up. Uh, do I have to drop it up here first and now to the ring slot? Yeah, obviously I have. And this ring gives us a plus one defense bonus. Nice. But as you can see, now we are carrying nine items. So we're a little bit closer to getting uh, encumbered. You have found a stairway. Again, use E to descend the stairway. E. And we can go downstairs with the K button. We do that. You can enhance weapons and armor by combining them with runes. Oh, we will try that. Now we are on level one of the Caverns of Chaos. Does that mean the tutorial is over now? And we're playing with Dwar Yalf? Probably that's the case. So we have to check the other tabs manually. This first one shows us defense, protection, hit points, and satiation. Okay, this is some additional information. And down here we see the body attributes. Your body attribute represent, represents your character's physical shape, strength, dexterity, health, toughness, and so on. Star ratings are to be read as follows. A rating of one star indicates sickness and extremely poor shape. A rating of two stars represents a very weak specimen according to human standards. A rating of three stars indicates a pretty average human. A rating of four stars represents a strong, healthy and or agile standard human and a rating of five stars represents pinnacle among humans. Five plus stars are superhuman capabilities. Yeah, yeah so I, I kind of guess so. Mind is learning willpower perceptiveness and aura is uh, charisma, beauty and uh, Mystery aura, whatever that means. Let's see what the uh, star ratings mean for these other categories. 
A rating of one star in the mind category indicates stupidity and the total lack of any kind of formal education. Oh, that's brutal. <laughs> a rating of two stars represents a dumb specimen according to human standards. A rating of three stars indicates average human intelligence. Four stars, a bright, smart and or wise standard human. And five stars represent the pinnacle of human intelligence. Five plus stars are a true genius level capabilities. And finally aura. One star indicates a truly vile and reproachable character. Two stars a very unattractive and hardly bearable specimen by human standards. Oh, that's so sad. Who wants, who wants a game to say such a thing about you? <laughs> hardly bearable. Oh, that's brutal. <laughs> Three stars, uh, a nondescript person. Four stars, an attractive, charming and somewhat fascinating being according to the human standards. And five stars represents mind-blowing beauty, extreme charisma, and a totally fascinating person. And five plus stars, superhuman attraction that might be able to enslave people at a quick glance. Wow, I like that. I'm looking forward to see how that works. Our character is a bit hard to see. I think we have five stars on body. Four stars in mind and three in aura. Do I see that right? So these are shining and the ones to the very right are not. Is that right? Probably. Yep, yeah, indeed. Thomas is directly involved in Ultimate Adam. Adam without the creator being involved would be a strange thing, I think. Let's take a look at the fourth tab. The fourth and the third look exactly the same to me. The fifth as well. So the only difference is on the second tab we have these, these stars and uh, we have just a short uh, note that we are unencumbered. While this one has uh, more detailed information about the encumbrance. It has every single stud down here and we see the turns and speed. So I guess that's everything we could check at the moment. So now let's enter the caverns of chaos. Right in front of us there is a treasure chest and I think what was the button for? For E was the button. Indeed it was E and we see that we can do five different uh, actions with the E menu at the moment. We could unmount a torch, rip the torch off the wall, smash the treasure chest, extinguish the wall torch, and we can also jump and smash the wall torch. I think what we want to do, we want to smash the treasure chest, or could we just... Yeah, we smashed it. What is inside this chest? An iron cap plus one protection, as well as the hearth and cake. Let's pick all of that up. And this iron cap might be worth equipping. Let's do that. Plus one protection. Never a bad thing. The hearthling cake. Do we get any statistics? How much a little satiation does? Nah, nope. Yeah, Paolo, cake is not a bad idea. But we will wait a little bit. We will care about the cake once we get hungry. Oh, there are lots of additional information that we didn't see yet. <laughs> Up here are the skills. There are martial skills. Axes, medium body. Oh, armor is now a skill. Take a look at that. Axes, 4 out of 15. What happens if we reach 15? Just a new level? We will see. Medium body. Oh, no, no, no. Axes, accuracy plus 1. Then from level 2 we get... Minimum and maximum damage plus 20% when using axes. Oh, that's interesting. It's a talent tree. And 20% bonus in melee combat, yeah? Then from level 3 we get 
to hit chance plus 10%, minimum plus 2. And from level 4. Is this two different things here? Yeah. Aha, skill tier 0 is just damage and accuracy. Then skill tier 2, we get uh, improved damage. And in skill tier 3, we get accuracy. We can also get wood chopping. Ah, oh, increases damage cost to wooden structures and beings by 300%. I, I like talent trees in certain games because I generally like it a lot if I have to make choices for my character. If I have to, if I can train everything to the maximum, I'm, uh, I think sometimes that steals the character of the character, the personality. If you have to make choices, you can get one thing, but you can't get another. I kind of like that. We have to see how that works out in this game. Uh, next level. Now we can take a look at the next levels later, once we level up. Body armor, what do we have here? Improves your protection value by 15% when wearing medium armor. Improves your dodge value by 10% with medium armor. Improves your protection value by 15% while wearing medium armor. Aha. Next we will probably get the shield stone, but we'll do that later. Blunt weapons, crossbows, heavy body armor, light body armor, long blades. Oh, you have to train the different armor types. Interesting. Quarter staves, shield mastery, short blades and slings. Then we have mundane skills, scavenging, athletics, literacy and stealth. We have a little bit of scavenging. What does that mean? You can find more gold scattered around and find more loot in treasure chests. We don't have this one, which would make us find loot on enemies more often. Uh, okay. Yeah, athletics, literacy and stuff. I'm not sure if that's actually all skills available or is it all skills available to this particular character. And uh, Tom, uh, it, it's ki some kind of a science. Um, <laughs> I played Tom a couple of times and I had a couple very fun runs with it, but I never really got into the game to the point where, where, where I was able to beat it. <coughs> I had the feeling I, I had to spend more time on the game if I wanted to beat it. No spells to be seen here, so if the spells are not all to be seen, it's possible that this is also the same with the skills. We just see the ones that are available to us. Nope, Schmeezy, I have not played a run yet. This is actually my very first run. Uh, I'm just trying to, uh, to, to get the full experience of the game. So I, I never played a run. This is the first time I, I, I played a couple turns a while ago, but this is the first time I really tried to play the game. We have a diary with certain entries here. Enter the Caverns of Chaos tutorial level, and then we enter the Caverns of Chaos. We, made, we can manually enter a note as well. Um, chatted with some amazing people on Twitch. Uh, Twitch doesn't really fit. Just enter some text. <laughs> Wahoo! It's fun. Let's save that. And now we have a manual diary entry. That's pretty cool. So if something exciting happens in the game, you can make a diary entry and uh, later it is very easy to find the situation in the, probably in the, in the, in the history of the character. I like that. 
here we have notes. Uh, don't you eat that yellow snow? Simply because I was listening to Frank Zappa just yesterday. Oops. Yeah, the note was saved. That's very good. Yeah, I, I have no clue about the gameplay as well. Here we find quests, but I don't think quests are already implemented. And here is body info. I'm not sure what that's supposed to mean. Body info? Maybe we will find out later. For now, do you think it's a good idea to pick up this torch from the wall? Nah, maybe not. If we find a dark room, we can come back and get it. So, let's open this chest. Here we have a stick. I'm not sure if we need a stick. Probably rather not. And some gold pieces. Let's just take the gold pieces. What do we have here? Chaos runes. Do we want to step on the chaos runes? Let's do that. Let's step on the runes. It's maybe a bad idea, but bam! What happens? Ah. I didn't realize any effect can we do anything with it no we cannot there is an event lock ah Dwarjalf is corrupted for two points that's what happened apparently these chaos runes corrupt us we don't yet have any corruption points up here, 0% still, but maybe later this will make uh, some kind of a difference. Then we have some gold pieces here, as well as rocks. Rocks are always good and a large ration. I think we can just eat the large ration. I, I was just, to, who said it, that our food is not yet implemented. Let's eat that. Click on the large ration and then how do we eat it? Right click maybe? No, we can just drop it. I think there's no need to pick it up then. Drop the delicious food. But the rocks. The rocks. We will put the rocks in our slot for the missile weapon. Can we do that? No, I don't think we can do that. Uh, still have to... Get used to the uh, to the controls. An iron short spear. One d six damage. Let's pick that up too. Maybe we will find enemies who are very susceptible to to sticks. What do we have here? A large bat. Oh, what a nice sprite! See this. This, this angry bat face with the red eyes and the nose, that's cool. Yeah, I hope so too. The aesthetics, the uh, aesthetics are fantastic. I, I like these sprites a lot. You can see that they put a lot of love into it. This large bat though, it can see in darkness and it has a radar sense. Let's read the description of the bat. Glowing eyes and pitch black leathery wings that extend to impossible lengths are the only unsettling hints that it is out there in the dark. When at rest, it looks harmless enough, but its anger or fear are a nightmarish fluttering sight and its size is unheard of away from these caves. Oh. Yeah, the music is always... I also love the music that uh, that was written for the original Adam game. Okay, we get, we get attacked by a lot of enemies now. Here we have a jackal. Everybody knows that jackals are dangerous. Still know the uber jackal effect? Oh, I remember it painfully. <laughs> it's snout covered in fresh blood and gore. It sniffs and then points its nose straight at you. This is no sheepdog or pet, but a free 
wild eyed howler and eater of fresh flesh and carrion. And this hungry hunter often travels in packs. Ooh, whoever wrote this text has a heart for alliterations. I think we can easily kill these guys though. An iron flail, 42 plus 2 bludgeoning damage. That's not bad, let's pick that up. Also the shield is an iron shield. It's a lot better than the shield we had earlier. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't look that threatening, that's true. This iron shield though, that's an improvement. Let's drop our old shield. I think we have to put it to the backpack first and then to the ground. Now we can drag the iron shield over here. The flail, the flail. Do we want to use it? 2d4 plus 2. While our X has 1d6 plus 6. I think the X is probably a little bit better. We stay with the X. So, which direction do we take? Let's go to the right. And we find our first Cobalt. Chaotic and evil. Zero protection, very low HP, just five hit points. Very dexterous though. Good at learning and magic. Uh, it has pretty high magic resistance, 5%. And it evades all traps. Scaled, lithe, and short snouted. This creature takes pride in its hollowed out lair. The bane of gnomes. Much is said of its penchant for, s for sniping and skirmishes. Less, uh, less is known of their loyal clan ties, their group tactics and their shamanic magic. But this one seems unwilling to share. Okay, let's start a fight with this kobold. I think he looks pretty cool. I, I was at first moment I was not sure if it was a kobold or maybe a little orc. Let's kill this guy. He goes down with just one single blow. What did he drop? Oh, I see arrows. That's good. I see rags. We don't need the rags. Small shield. Nope. Iron dagger. Nope. But let's pick up the short bow. From now on, we have a ranged weapon. This is our ranged weapon. The short bow. Hello. Doesn't work. Why not? Huh. It's not suitably sized for a dwarf. Maybe it's too big for a dwarf. Apparently a dwarf cannot use the short bow. Maybe we need a dwarf and short bow? Is there something like that? Probably. We keep... Oh no, also the arrows we cannot use. Can we really not use these rocks as a ranged weapon? Why can't we do that? Maybe it's not implemented yet. So, go around here. What's that? A purple crystal. What does it do? We can destroy it and nothing happens. Oh, is that a rat? It is even a giant rat. Cause a giant red rot on a failed toughness check. Oh! With 3%, so the giant red can poison us. Hi, Eldritch Wolfie! <laughs> Welcome to the chat! <laughs> yeah, that's a little strange indeed. I, I expected uh, the dwarf to be able to use a short bow. If he cannot use a long bow, that's something different, but a short bow. Maybe it's just not implemented yet as a weapon for the player character. As a child, you remember rats scurrying away from the light. But none as large as this. This red dwarfs you. <laughs> We are a dwarf. Is this a joke? <laughs> Yeah, uh, how much time did you miss? Uh, you missed probably like uh, three quarters of an hour, but we played it really slowly. We took a close look at the introduction, at the tutorial and everything. So uh, in terms of pure gameplay, you did not miss a lot. 
So, the red dwarfs the dwarf that we are. Now you understand why it's much smaller cousin must run. Their minute cry, uh, minute cries of terror now invade your mind as their champion advances towards you. It's the champion of the red. Oh wow! Let's kill the champion of the red. Okay, it was not that strong. Is that gold? I think so. Pick up the gold. We don't need an iron knife. We have to kill this bat. It's again large bat. Dodged one attack, but with the second one we got it. Gold pieces and leather armor. Nope. Also, the animations are pretty cute. Leather girdle of carrying capacity. Excellent. What a nice finding. That means at the moment we can carry 21 items. But this will change in just a second when we replace our girdle with this one. Why can't we do that? Oh, we have to unequip the other girdle first. It makes sense. And now, carrying capacity. Here we go. This one we can drop to the ground. Now, we can still carry 21. Hmm. Okay, okay. Obviously, it doesn't make a difference. Well, we accept that. Iron dagger, not interesting. I still have to get used to play uh to to, to move the character with my light right uh, left hand with W A S D. I I never played a, a roguelike with W A S D so far. This waterfall looks pretty beautiful. That's an ordinary rat, I think. Oh, yeah, it is. You have seen rats before, but this one is considerably bigger and much more bold. It squeaks. And his cousins squeak back from the dark. It is almost as if they are plotting your death. Quite unwilling to wait patiently until they can pick your bones. Yeah, Cassiopeia, I completely agree. Uh, it's, it's, it's just extremely uh, strange to me to play uh, with my left hand. What happened? That was a door trap. It didn't damage us though. Maybe it was not an ordinary door trap, but rather just some collapsing wall that didn't hit us. Can we attack this red? No, we cannot move diagonally, so we have to retreat a couple steps. No, no, we can just kill the red. The other guys are blocked by the by the by 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 the by the treasure. So if we destroy this chest, there should be just one square from which they can attack us. So kill this guy. I'll wait for him. Is there a, a way to just stand on one square? What happened? Where did this cobalt come from? By the way, this is Gok the male orc. It is a named enemy. Wow. Three points of protection. Now he has pretty low HP, but what can Gok do? Leather cap, leather armor, iron mace and iron boots. Blood red eyes that shine out from the dark and, gl and the glint of great canines that almost don't fit in its mouth. Unmistakable signs of an orc. And wherever they go, war follows. A lone orc is a scout and means there are dozens more behind it. You had best kept your weapons close. You had best keep your weapons close. Okay, let's kill this guy. I think the fact that it was a named orc doesn't really matter. This ordinary orc probably has the... No! This is Bogoon, the orc scorcher. It's a different kind of orc. Are all humanoid enemies named or all intelligent ones? I don't know. Its face painted with coal and fresh ash. The Scorcher shakes its spear and lets out a resounding war cry. Eyes wide open and nostrils flared up, blood and foam froth, uh, foam froth from its mouth at the corners. Every orc lives for war, 
but this one must enjoy it. What a bloody creature of evil. Kill it. Oh, and for the first time we got hurt. Did you see that? We took four points of damage. Woohoo! Damage. Let's check what these guys dropped. A hat. Gold pieces. Iron spear. Leather armor. Short bow we cannot use. And arrows we cannot use. This is an iron hand axe. Worse than the axe we already have. Leather sandals. I think they are an upgrade. Let's pick them up. And an orcish corpse that we don't need. I think we don't need an orcish corpse. Let's again check our boots. We have leather boots that don't do anything. Let's drop them first over here, then to the ground, and replace them with these sandals footwear, which don't do anything either. Didn't I read that? They should do something. Oh no. Hmm, apparently not. Who are you? A mysterious shade that obviously doesn't want to fight us. Is this the first NPC we found? Uh, I am almost sure that um, food is not yet implemented. It doesn't work yet. It is just uh, in the game for favor, but the food mechanics, they are still working on it. Are these iron boots an upgrade? Let's check that. I think they should be. At the moment we have 1410. If we do equip the iron boots though, we have 1311. That's an upgrade indeed. Very nice. Let's try to chat with this guy after stealing everything from confusion juice nice from these chests gold pieces nothing here let's talk to this guy how do we do that i press the e button again we could go the stairway attack the mysterious chain but we can also chat with it and of course that's what we want to do Ah, Horsfair, thanks a lot for letting me know. And hi, Nostradamus. <laughs> nice to see, uh, nice seeing you in the chat. So, let's talk to the mysterious shade. Hail thee, adventurer. Thou hast been chosen by fate to alter its course. Empower thee, I shall to do that. Receive my gift so that thou art able to harvest energy from the very fabric of reality. Use this gift wisely to choose thy path. Okay, Mysterious Shade. I don't really understand that, but what does it mean? Oh, take a look at this picture. That's how the shade looks. Hi, Battleaxeman. Nice to see you on, on, on stream again. The shady figure gestures at you. Without further advance warning, you feel tremendous power floating and rippling through your body. You will now be able to harvest the very essence of reality from items in order to fuel your health, magical powers and knowledge. Use this gift wisely. How does that work? What exactly does it do? Technically, oh, we get an explanation. Fantastic. The art is wonderful. You're right. It's absolutely wonderful. Technically, you will now be able to destroy items in exchange for hit points, power points, or experience points. This can be done using the buttons in the lower right corner of the inventory screen. To be able to... Use these buttons, you must be standing at a position with the items on the ground. These items can then be destroyed in exchange for energy. You become able to harvest hit points starting at experience level 1, power points at experience level 8 and experience points starting at experience level 3. Oh, that's very handy. I think so, definitely. Let's try that once we get wounded. 
Up here we have a staircase, I think. Is that the staircase? Yeah, the stairs leading downward. We found them. But I think we better scout the rest of the level first. Maybe we can get a bit more experience or even some more items. What's this? A wooden barrier? Can we somehow destroy it? Nope, doesn't seem so. Okay, what do we have here? A male goblin rock thrower. From behind the front lines, jagged rocks fly out at you. The gifts of this clever and cowardly lot. They have eyes fit for scoping out rocks small enough to pick up and big enough to crush skulls with. And as long as they keep you afar, they can practice on you. How high is their perception? 13. Not too high, but also not too low. So we quickly kill this guy before we continue with this orc. It's obviously not a, ma uh, a named orc this time. What did they drop? Rocks. A minor thunder rune. Oh, we have to try that out. We have to try that out. A thunder rune. Excellent. Leather boots, leather sandals, iron hand axe, iron war hammer. Not bad. Items on the ground can be harvested for seven hit points. Let's do that. So we have now probably destroyed all the items and we're back at full HP. Well, nice. What about this rune? What does it do? We don't know. But let's try to use that rune on our axe or armor. Axe or, on the axe, of course, on the axe. We want a magical weapon. So what happened? Where did the rune go? Uh, it is engraved with the minor thunder rune. We don't see what it does, but maybe we will find that out as soon as we have our next fight. A health regeneration flux point. Okay, I should not have destroyed the items then. <laughs> oh, an arrow trap. Excellent. Did you see that? And a mouse hole. Okay, okay, okay. That's Oh, and a secret door as well. Can we open it? Yeah, but it's just some blood on the ground. Acid trap, damn! Kill this large bat. Perfect. And we find the next loot room. Pick up the gold pieces. And this iron ration. We'll use for health. One point of health. So, we're back at full, uh, full HP, back at full HP, perfect. What's that? A shelf, I try to push it. it, seems to have no effect. A rope, a leather cap, pushing it in this direction doesn't do anything either. Don't need light leather boots, but there on the ground we have an iron lever. Let's pull this lever, how do we do that? We can smash it, we can jump, we can coat it, no, let's just smash it. I think the levers are not yet usable. What is this? There's some markings on the ground, but we cannot, we cannot do anything with it. I'm looking forward to see when we will level up. We're currently at 169 experience points. All, already more than halfway to the next level. What's this? A marsh reduces jumping range by 70%. Okay, we didn't intend to jump through that, through that room anyways. What do we have here? That's a, a Skull? What kind of a skull? Can, can you show me again? A stone skull? Do we need a stone skull? Probably not. A corrupted torch? Nope. Corrupted does not sound good. I th 
think there was a way to smash this sarcophagus. Smash the Iron Maiden, let's do that. Yeah. And I guess we should be almost done with the first level. Kill this red, kill this bat. The enemies on the first level are not particularly hard. It's just kobolds, orcs, here's a goblin rock thrower again. But I'm not afraid. Okay, we can, we can, we can, this lectern, we can push it around the room. Interesting. Can we use the sling? Probably can. Let's try that. So now we might also pick up the rocks. And... Uh, if a sling is not suited for the size of a dwarf, then I'm almost sure that ranged combat has just not yet been implemented. How can you be too small to use a sling? That's strange. <laughs> it's full regeneration flux point. We don't need that yet. Smash the urn. See if it gets us something. Nope, it does not. But we take the chaos rune. Yet another chaos point. I think the lever we can ignore. Oh, what happened? Oh, that was a lot of damage. I think that was a trap. Almost sure that was. <coughs> yeah, if, uh, if a, s a dwarf is too small to use a sling, that's a bit strange, I think. <laughs> I mean, is anybody... The sling is the traditional weapon of the small man, like in uh, David and Goliath. So if a small guy cannot use a sling, who should use it? Okay, let's go out of here again. Um, I think we should be pretty far away from unexplored area now. Let's see if the auto explorer helps us to find further interesting things. Making some discoveries, auto exploring through the level. There is another. Hello, this guy is peaceful as it seems. Can we talk with him? No, we cannot. But let's let's keep him peaceful. Cavemen use things. Okay, I, I see. Hobgoblin. Oh, hobgoblins! I think this is the first time we see a hobgoblin. Starting up at this brutish large cousin of uh, to goblins, you can clearly see the family resemblance. But apart from its ears and its sharp, crooked teeth. This broad bearded warrior has courage and tactical cunning and a very large weapon to boot. Okay. The large weapon is an iron mace. Aha. Anyways, these monsters are not dangerous. <laughs> Generally, so far, we didn't meet any dangerous monsters yet. Which is a bit uncommon for a, for a roguelike. Usually the first levels are very dangerous in roguelikes. This one, uh, at least so far, it is not. Oh my god! We got hurt heavily. Anything we want to use here? No. So let's use that to regenerate. Same with these items. Um, a 
Is there any way to get down to the other items? Who was that? Good. Is there an auto walk command? Something like W was in the uh, in the old game. Okay, we're back back, back at for the tree. Ouch. Oh, hello. Well, cat. I am pretty positive that in this game it is still possible to kill cats without a penalty. Do we want to try that? Let's give it a try. Oh, did you hear that? What a heartwarming sound. Oh no, I feel really bad. It is a wild cat. It is supposed to be dangerous and not... Meow. Oh. <laughs> I'm a bad adventurer. Who's that? A dwarf? Do we have a dwarf? No, it's a male bandit. It is a bandit. With an iron battle axe. A brood thug ready to take your money, your clothes, and basically anything you possess, including your life. Only over my dead body. Yeah, hey, Eldritch Wolfie, you're right. That was horrible. But I, I had to try it. I had to try it once. No, 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 I don't want... Are you sure you want to quit the game? I do not. <coughs> Congratulations, you have reached level two. Oh, so now we will level up. Maybe I could have jumped over the cat. That's a good idea. We have to try if that's possible. We'll try that the next time we meet a cat. Well, at first, there are quite a lot of enemies around here, like this gremlin. This small creature defiles every sage's description and cave crawling th of cave crawling things. It has fur, yet it flavors damp uh, it favors damp places and pools. Its eyes radiate a bright, sickly green, yet it gives in the yet it lives in the dark. It has hundreds of tiny, sharp teeth, like an enormous eel. But it eats only land-dwelling beasts. Kill this gremlin, come on, kill it. Kill it. Oh my god, it is very dodgy. There spawned another monster. The very moment we finally hit the gremlin. Any cool items here? No, I don't th think so. Ah, nothing interesting here, but we just leveled up. Up here, is it that? Oh, we can rename our character. That's interesting. I think we can. How does the level up work? We have three points available. Ah, okay, okay, okay. We have three points available to improve our martial skills, and I think we will stick to access for now. Can we learn this tier 4 skill? Improves minimum and maximum damage by 20. Or do we rather want to increase our defensive capabilities? 30% chance to reduce a critical hit to a non-critical. Oh, that's an excellent, that's an excellent skill. Let's, let's learn that. Okay, that cost us 2 points apparently. This one, I think, costs three points so we cannot learn that anymore this one is three points as well we might just take the bonus damage against lumber constructs but i don't think we do that what do we do with our points here we could get more loot from dead monsters uh, athletics strength plus two Dex plus two, toughness plus two. I think we take strength plus two, maybe. Yeah, we take strength plus two. That's definitely a good idea. So was that our complete level up? Did we get any increase on strength or something like that? Probably not. Nope. 
So, level 2 dwarf. Go downstairs. We have just entered the second level of the Caverns of Chaos. But before we start exploring this level, I will take a very short break and pay a visit to the toilet. <laughs> uh, Nostradamus, I don't think we will play Tiffany today. Today, I, 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 my plan was to just, uh, to just explore this game and, um, and suck in the atmosphere of the new Adam. Next week, we will go back to Tiffany's Adventures. And I think we will do so on Tuesday. So for those who want to continue following Tiffany's adventures, Tuesday, 8 p.m. Central European time. That's when the next episode of Tiffany's adventures will take place here on stream. But for now, before we go deeper into the caverns of chaos, let's take a short little break. I'll be right back in five minutes. Until then, bye everybody. Hey guys and girls, here I am again and I brought some support for the next dungeon level. Since we did such a bad thing to the first fillet we found uh, uh, in, the, in the dungeon, I, I had to do something good for, for, uh, for another cat at least. <laughs> so, let's go right back into the second dungeon level. So, what do we have here? I think that's a tree stump. Can we can we get something out of this tree stump if we if we if we destroy it with our axe? Let's try that. Almost chopped it down. Oh, what's that? A male pixie comes out of this tree stump. It is neutral, but it is our enemy. Small, cute, lovely humanoids with butterfly or dragon wings. They are clad in colorful and earth-toned stuff. All pixie folk have a weird sense of humor with a streak of meanness. Lots of meanness. Yeah, okay, that's why it attacks us. Let's check the stats of the pixie. It is pretty weak with just 9 points of strength, but very dexterous. 25 points of defense value. Also, 19 HP is actually pretty tough. That's more than most enemies said that we met so far. Very strong magical talents. High learning. Okay, let's see if we can kill it. Missed it, missed it, missed it. And finally a hit. One more hit, should do the job. Come on, Joyaf, you can do it. And the pixie goes down. Nice. Can we, can we smash? Smash? Oh no, I didn't want to smash that. Yeah, the coffin. That's what I wanted to smash. Okay, and we are probably in the middle of the level. With uh, doors to almost every direction. We start exploring the east. Let's go here. What's this on the ground? Is this a, a spell book? It is a spell book, but I don't think that we can use spell books on this character. Maybe we can make... Oh! Ooh, tension room, tension room, tension room featuring a male goblin, a male kobold, goblin rock thrower, goblin slave master, a new one. I think the enemies do respawn on floors. We saw a couple of enemies appearing out of a, um, a strange light, a strange glowing light, and uh, this might be the respawning animation. What about the slave master? The crack of a whip, caked with the blood of the weak rings, uh, rings out. This goblin regards you as one, as one would ex uh, inspect sheep at auction. With discerning eyes and a smile showing a single well-sharpened gold tooth. Do its jewel-ringed ears. Um, do his jewel ring ears hear the steps of a potential captive? 
No, no, no. We will not be caught by this goblin. What's this? A bugbear. Oh, and it looks pretty cool. 27 HP. Pretty strong. Do you still remember the stories of monsters who drag rowdy children from their cots? Apparently, it is said, so did the wizard who called forth bugbears from the sludge. Sharp claws. Yellow teeth. The stink spoiled flesh and cruel tapered ears. My mic is picking up static. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. How can I change that? Um, does it still do so? Much better now. Okay, that's good. Maybe it was just uh, a certain a certain cat uh, playing with the uh, with the wire of the of the of the mic. <laughs> I guess that might be the case. It lowered now. Okay, that's good. Huh? Okay, let's go. Um, we have to kill this bugbear. A fire beetle. Interesting. Six points of protection value. That's quite a lot. Immune to fire damage. Prospectors regard them as constructs of some vengeful god. For this murderous instinct, insect has orange red eyes that resemble beautiful gems. At the mountain's fire must surely dwell in its and the mountain's fire must surely dwell in its effulgent belly. Effulgent, I don't know that word. Since it tires not of rending and tearing of flesh. Okay, there's a couple of dangerous monsters, some new monsters. Let's see how we, how we do against them. Is there any way to just keep standing on one position and wait for the monsters? Something like... S maybe? No, S is not the right one. The five button? Neither. I don't think we can wait for the monsters. We killed the bugbear though, that's good. Almost got them down. Okay, we took a little hit. Come on, finish them off. Shining brightly. Oh, thank you. So, what did they drop? Anything nice? Sling, iron short sword. We use that for regeneration. Thick leather furs. I think that's worse than our armor. Iron maze, bugbear corpse, rock. Nope, we don't take that either. Leather boots, arrows, cobalt corpse. A minor thunder rune. Yet another minor thunder rune. We pick that up, definitely. There's also a Scorch. No, I don't think we need a Scorch. Let's take a look at the other items. Anything useful? Anything we need? No, I don't think so. Regeneration. And we're back to full HP. That's nice. But what, we, what, what do we do with the, new, with the new Thunder Rune? I think we want a very thundery battle axe. No, no, cannot do that. But we can get a thunder chainmail. A thunder chainmail. Let's see if that changes anything. We have now a uh, thunder rune on our chainmail. I have no idea what these runes do. I hope we, we will be able to find that out later. Okay, we took a hit. Let's not play that too quickly. Um, any more decent items here? Nope, that's regeneration. We'll be back at full HP. <laughs> yeah, I can probably name him ACDC. If we uh, can struck our enemies with thunder, that's the... Oh, oh, wow, did you see that? We set the room on fire by destroying the lamp. Oh, that's interesting. We can maybe use this against our enemies. 
Uh, talking about ACDC, uh, just yesterday was um, the anniversary of the death of Bon Scott, the legendary first singer of ACDC. That's, no, two days ago on Friday. That's why Friday evening I've been listening to quite a lot of ACDC. In here, who's the, oh, is that a rat man or a bear man? It's a rattling thief. It is indeed a rattling thief. Okay, okay. Pretty fragile, very dexterous. This former trader has fallen in with a bad crowd and consequently changed his line of business. You wouldn't trust this customer one inch. And even that might be too far. After passing him a narrow tunnel, you'd better count your gold twice. We have to kill him. Come on, let's go. Oh, what happened? I think we stepped on a teleportation trap. I really think we got teleported. See if we can again get Pixie out of this tree trunk. This time it's not a Pixie, but it's rather a Gremlin. Gremlin goes down. Health region, we don't need that yet. Bear trap, another spare trap. Is this a trap room? It probably is. Okay, okay. Killed these guys, but it is obviously a lot of traps in here. Apple, rocks, light fur, and an iron hand axe. Acid trap, ouch, that hurt. No, it didn't hurt that much. And again we got teleported. Or have we maybe got a teleport corruption? Something like that. I don't think so. That's a bit sad. Hello, hello, hello. It's a bit sad that we can't, don't have a quick walk command. That's what I wanted to see. But at first we find here Joe Carr. The male chosen of Branalbin Black Wizard. Branalbin, this name should ring a bell to everybody who watches Tiffany's adventures. Because Tiffany is currently wearing the cloak of this particular Branalbin. That's interesting. Yeah, you're right, uh, CGM. They have very, they have this, the same bluesish uh, tone in their voice. The mic is still picking up static. That's not good. I'm not 100% sure how I can change it. Um, hmm. Mic, it should be gone now. Mic? Is it better now? No static? Oh, perfect. That's very good. Excellent. So, we just found the chosen of Branalbin the Black Wizard. The very Branalbin whose cloak Tiffany is currently wearing. The pitch black robe seems to swallow the figure who sways back and forth in what seems like a prayer. That is, until the song comes to an end. And the ends of his uh, vestments curl up, undulating like snakes or the tendrils of some eldritch beast. He did not come alone, but this guy seems to be not hostile, at least not yet. Let's see if we can talk with him. We can! We can indeed talk with him. <coughs> okay, here we see his face. Nay, you do not appear trustworthy. Return to me when you found your inner balance. Apparently, he only talks to neutral characters. That's what I think at least. He only talks to neutral characters, not to us. Because we are lawful. We shouldn't, we shouldn't just attack him. I, I, for a short time I considered attacking him in hopes of getting something nice from him. 
but I think this is the guy you can only talk to when you are neutral. Which is pretty cool, there are specific encounters for characters of the different alignments. What's that? A chaos tentacle. Is that an enemy or is it just an obstacle? It seems to be just an obstacle. Oh, a shaman's feathered head. We don't want to use that, but uh, well, interesting. Two levers here that still don't work as we already found out. They're just for the flair and the flavor at the moment. Again, we've got shaman and a large cobalt. Start with the large cobalt, he goes down. And now let's finish off the shaman. That worked. Hit an iron mace. Aha. Iron warhammer. Don't need that either. Okay, another secret door. And another rattling. This time it's, uh, it's again a rattling thief. Oh, Cooney, would you be so kind to not step right in front of my monitor? That would be amazing. Oh, we found a cloak. Let's, let's check this cloak. Maybe it's better than ours. Our cloak is a hooded cloak, plus one protection. This cloak, on the other hand, is a light cloak. Let's, let's just try it. It's pretty much the same. Okay, just the same. So, let's, you need to make a little change from time to time. <laughs> Extreme kitty close-up, indeed. Smash the cauldron. Nothing in there. Chaos runes, we take them. Can we take them several times? Okay, yeah, maybe that's just the same as ordinary corruption and I don't think we want to get particularly corrupted if we can avoid it. I use the uh, auto explore command here. Oh, 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 teleportation trap. Once again, teleportation. Here we have the downstairs, another ordinary red, several traps in this room. The acid traps seem to be the probably the most dangerous, but we get healed directly just to get acid uh, corroded once again. Who's that? A giant centipede. Does he really look like a centipede? I don't know, he looks more like a cockroach to me. <laughs> this overgrown arthropod rarely has exactly 100 legs, as several have usually been lost while converting victims into meals. They attack with multiple legs, seeking to hold their prey for a poisonous bite. Several different colors have been reported and they are rumored to be the larval from a form of some other more fearsome beast. Okay, of which one? I'd like to know that. How oh, goes bad, goes bad, goes bad. Ah, dwarves have a high life expectancy, so this shouldn't be a problem. But as you can see, the ghost bed has not yet a description. No flavor text for the ghost bed. Maybe it will be implemented soon. So we just kill it and see if there is something in this room, but it doesn't look like. Oh, again, this acid traps. These acid traps, I don't like them. I'm not sure if we can get anything from these sarcophagi at the moment. Did they drop anything useful? Nope, apparently not.
So we auto explore through the level. Yeah, at the moment I think it's okay to uh, to play it a bit quicker. It seems like we are pretty safe here. And we haven't met a particularly dangerous enemy in quite a while now. Question is, have we scouted everything? Or is there still something missing? You are now able to harvest experience points from items by using the appropriate button. Okay, that's excellent. So now we have to convert all of these items on the level into experience. We want to level up soon. I think we just leveled up, by the way. Yeah, yeah. That's what we did. We leveled up. Let's see what we can do now. We have four skill points plus one. We use it to increase the power of our axe, I think. Shield destruction? Nah, I don't think so. You must learn the improved damage two skill before this one becomes available. Improved damage two? Is it this one? Is this improved damage? Is this improved damage? No. Maybe this one? Let's try that. We, we just learn this one and see if this becomes available now. No, wait a second. We already had improved damage. Can I, can I unlearn that? Damn, I cannot. Have we still got enough points for... Yeah, we have. We learn this. We can also learn the shield breaker thing, I think. Yeah. And the next one will give us a chance to amputate the limbs of our enemies. Wow, that's brutal. Is there going to be an overworld? I have no clue. I absolutely have no clue. If anybody on the chat knows that, please let me know. Because in my eyes, uh, the whole overworld thing adds a lot to the flavor of the original Adon. It doesn't feel like this uh, typical dungeon crawler, simply because you can uh, travel between the dungeons. And I, I like that quite a lot. And there is a world where you've got the feeling that people live there. Of course, that's not yet part of Ultimate Adon. The game is uh, still in a pretty, in a relatively early stage. And I think all these features will be implemented later. Convert all this into experience. Ah, oh, there is this guy again. But we just want the experience. Oh, that would be great if they did that. It's just a single experience point. Can we kill this guy? No, we cannot. We made a discovery. Which discovery did we make? I don't know. Okay, let's go downstairs. How can we reach the downstairs? Just wait a second. No, 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 no. We want all the experience. Let's quickly go upstairs one more time at first and convert all the upstairs items into experience. Uh, is there a shortcut to go upstairs? Nope. Ah, see, all these items, we want to use them. 35 experience, 14. Holy moly. I think that's absolutely worth what we're doing here. 80 experience points just from this last Wait a second. Have we already been here? We see the level on our minimap, but it seems that we still uh, have to cover the fog of war. Male human bandit. Let's quickly kill him. Are we actually on... Where, where, where could we see that? We are back on Cavers of Chaos 1, and somehow the the, 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 the minimap got... Uh, uns uh, the, the, 
the, the level map got unscouted. Maybe that's a bug. What do you think, guys? Does it look to you like this was intended? Oh, another kitty cat. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I wanted to jump over it. Come on. Let's jump to the other side of this cat. Doesn't work. Oh, damn. That means we have to... Yeah, to me it sounds like a bug too. So after the stream, I, I'm i gonna report that. I'm pretty sure this is not intended, that we have to rescout the complete level. I think we've got most things now though. Here, that's something. Turn into experience. We can go back downstairs. Yeah, almost. Yeah, also we cannot re-explore it with auto-explore because... Uh, wait a second. Um, can we see items? Items are... Uh, they almost have the same color as features. That's a bit of a problem. So if I go here, is that an item or a feature? Try that. This is an item for sure. Oh, our food that we dropped in the very beginning. <laughs> so I guess this is... No, this is a feature. Here. Oh, that's a lot of items. That's perfect. These might be features as well. We're already more than halfway to the next level. It's pretty much without doing anything, but... Uh, um, going back to the to the upper level and uh, sec and uh, using the skill on everything. Skills were light blue and items green. <laughs> I'm not sure. Maybe I have a little bit of color blindness for that. Is it for you easy to see the difference between these two colors? I really have to concentrate on it. <laughs> but I think we have everything now. Maybe this is an item. If we get there. Oh, okay, no, no. That was uh, just a single arrow. <coughs> I want to go to the downstairs, which doesn't really work. Now it should work. Kuni. Kuni. Can you maybe go here? Or there? I'm afraid she doesn't speak English. Ay, 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 how many attacks does this guy have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Usually they don't, you're completely right. Uh, let's go down here. And now this is dungeon level 3 and um, although I'm pretty sure we haven't been on... Is this level 3? Wait a second. Wait a second. If this is level 3 then why do we see the whole level on our minimap? We can reset the map. Let's try that. Reset map. What did happen? I don't know. The stream stopped? What What do the rest of you guys say? Can you still see the stream? Because my stream is, uh, at my end, it says it's perfectly fine. Uh, 
I hope it didn't. <laughs> yeah, the point is uh, we have a completely scattered minimap of level 3. Although I'm pretty sure we haven't been here at all so far. On the other hand, it looks like level 2. Maybe it's just... Ah, <laughs> it is level... Too, but um, again, we lost the 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 our, our exploration of the fog of war. So whenever you leave a level, the fog of war gets reset. So let's go down here, and now we should actually be on dungeon level three. And I'm expecting the game to get progressively harder from level to level. The first levels were actually pretty easy. We didn't yet find any enemy who was able to threaten us. What do we have here? A hurtling black hurtling. This thing, is, is it meant to be called a black hurtling black hurtling? A bit strange, isn't it? Black hurtling black hurtling. This thing is the color and odor of ash, with eyes sunken and murky like watered-down milk. It is said to have once been a hearthling, but... Ah, uh, Kuni, what are you doing? Um, um, Kuni, come on. But... Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> I have to show you. Wait. Here. Yeah. That's what she's doing. <laughs> oh, you're on stream, Kuni. <laughs> yeah, she did, did, did I catch her? I think I, I did. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, <clears throat> this is not the show off with the cute catty stream. It is uh, the the Adam stream. Remember that, Mr. Overkill. <laughs> So, um, <coughs> black hurtling, black hurtling. <laughs> uh, but how could that be? A cruel curve jacks its spine and its claws on all, it crawls on all fours, muttering curses in forgotten tongues. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Uh, so you have cats too. <laughs> Uh, we have two cats, but uh, Kuni is the only cat that was uh, live on stream so far because Muna is a bit shy. She, uh, for some reason, she doesn't come when I stream. Anyways, I have to try to somehow look around her so we can kill these monsters. This uh, rapping thief, for example. <laughs> What did it drop? I, I wish I could see it, but I cannot. Uh, a hooded cloak. Is the hooded cloak better than our cloak? It maybe is. Let's give that a try. Also, here we have um, iron crossbow quarrel. Can we use the cro crossbow with our... <coughs> Three kitties. Morpheus, Isis and Uki. That's pretty cool names. Uki is very shy. Others are very cuddly. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Uh, I, I love cats uh, for uh, for several reasons. But I think cats are just fantastic animals. Let's try if we can use this crossbow. We can definitely not use the short bow. We can drop that as well. The crossbow, neither. I think dwarves are forbidden to use any kinds of weapons. Also, I, I kind of doubt that we will use any of these items at Anytime in the future, we might change our weapon if we find something really good, an artifact or a magical weapon or something like that. Hey, and we reach level 4. That's excellent. Just by sacrificing these items. So, let's take a look at our skills. We have got mundane skills. Oh, down here are all skills. I didn't see that earlier. There are okay. There are also arcane skills. And divine skills. How did I miss them in the first place? Which do we have here? Animancy. But I don't think Animancy is yet available. I don't see any skills. Oh, it is? It is. Uh, what does it do? 
Lesser and Soul Item. Animates an item adjacent to your position. Okay, that's interesting. Lesser Control and Sold Items. That's interesting. Yeah, I wonder so too. Because it's really very, very, uh, very, very handy. I think it gave us at least a whole level of experience so far. Can the soul and drain items drain power? Okay, that all looks pretty, pretty magical. Then we have grafting. What does grafting do? Allows you to magically, uh, magically attach one body part of the caster's size to the caster's body. Oh my god, that sounds horrible. Oh, and take a look at this, this brutal instrument. Butcher corpses to receive all body parts suitable for potential grafting. Okay, that's for the chaotic guys, I think. Hydromancy. Learn the cold touch spell. Okay, that's for spell casting. And ice armor. Pyromancy. Select the skill to learn, learn the firebolt spell. And burning hands. That's interesting. Divine skills. Here we have cure wounds. Stop bleeding. I just take a look at the first spells. Poison. We have poison thorn. And what's this? Magic resistance and a uh, chance to resist hostile spell effects. That's actually pretty cool. Anyways, we will not learn the divine or arcane spells. We will stay with the ones that we already have. We have four skill points now that could be enough to increase our damage with access even further. Grafting doesn't work, but it's gonna be super interesting once it does. Yeah, Sophie, uh, welcome to the stream. <laughs> nice to see you here. So uh, let us let us increase our access skill even further. <clears throat> Five percent bonus to amputation probability in melee combat. Wow, amputation. <laughs> yeah. Then here we have a skill. Minimum and maximum damage plus 20%, but we cannot use that yet. We don't have enough uh, skill points. Uh, we probably can learn this one, though. PV plus 15%, can we? Yes, we can. Excellent. That's really good. What about athletics? We have two points left here. Do we want more athletics or scavenging? Uh, um, let's learn this one and let's also corpses we don't need loot from chests I don't think we need that either what about athletics we can get additional dexterity I think uh, additional toughness toughness let's go for that let's also learn this spell this skill for additional toughness. In terms of martial skills, I don't think I want to learn anything else at the moment, especially not uh, archery, which we obviously cannot use as a dwarf. So, let's go. Since the last levels were relatively easy, I will try to play a little bit faster now using the auto-explore command a bit more. It's a large iron X. 2D7 plus 3. I think that's better than our weapon, isn't it? 2D7 plus 3. Our X does 1D6 plus 6. Our X has 7 to 12. This one has uh, 5 to 17. That's significantly better. Then here we have... No to hit bonus, and this is a plus two plus to hit bonus. Yeah, we swap our weapons. We will now use this iron, this large iron axe. 
if I can find the hand where I want to put it, which I cannot. Wait a second. I just unequipped the iron battle axe and ah, here it is. So, melee. Large iron axe. That's very good. And can we get the rune out of this thing? I don't think so. Anyways, let us get rid of this one and turn it into experience. A 70% damage due to... Oh, that's not good. 70% because we are a dwarf. We get a damage reduction on it. Is it that? Okay, and I just... Ah, uh, idiot me. I think I just made a... I, I read... Oh no, uh, we really do just 70% damage with it. I thought it was plus 70% for whatever reason, but it's just 70%. It's definitely because we're a dwarf. Oh, that was a mistake. That was a mistake. Wait a second. I want to destroy this tree trunk. And it spawns the gremlin. Yet another gremlin. And let's continue. Oh, no, 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 no. That looks dangerous. Uh, I think that's jackals, yeah? Let us kill the jackals. Uh, at least the, the access to the two hit bonus, so we should hit the enemies more reliably now. And we amputate the limbs of these jackals. That's pretty br brutal. See here, yeah, jack left hind legs, and ah, uh, it's horrible. But well, that's what we do with our eggs. We amputate the limbs of our enemies. Here are the downstairs. Here's another tentacle. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, <laughs> oh, can I destroy the wall with this axe? That's interesting. See, we do damage to the wall. Oh, let's see. Let's see if we can crush it. Some kind of a gate cleaver. We destroyed the wall, indeed. Oh, we can use the axe to destroy our walls. Who is that? A male ogre. 58 HP, 5 armor class, 25 strength, he's very strong, wearing a heavy, wielding a heavy club, its bulb casts a white shadow before it, a great hulking mass, mumbling, lumbering, dragging its huge club behind it. From a face without symmetry, hazy eyes focus on you, on your frame and your size. It smiles through crooked teeth, and you know that it thinks you are for lunch. No, 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 Ogre, no way. You will not eat us. We will rather eat you. Okay, but he does damage. He indeed does damage. He dropped thick leather first, and I think we have to use a couple of items to regenerate before we go back to using them for experience weird weapon of wall destruction yeah indeed very weird with an axe on the other hand an axe is not that dangerous from a pig pig axe don't you think if we brutally slam that wall yeah it can work i think let's kill that bandage we're back at decent hp so we can go back to getting experience Hmm. 
Mithril boots. That's an upgrade. Finally an item that we definitely need. So we unequip our iron boots. Minus one plus one. And we equip these mithril boots. Minus one plus two. Nice, nice. Let's use the iron boots for healing. Hi, the president. Hall. Yeah, thanks a lot. I, I'm glad you're enjoying the videos. And Ultimate Adam, my first impression, it's exciting. It's exciting. You, you see that it's still in, in progress. There are some important things about uh, the, the feeling of Adam which are still missing. But, uh, but anyways, uh, there are many things that I think that can make for a great game if the development goes into the right direction. The original add-on, I think I completed it uh, 26 times. It's not actually that much. Uh, I have a list with my winners and I think it's 26 or 27. I mean, compared to Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup, which I won more than 250 times by now, uh, it's not a lot. <laughs> We're already halfway through this level. We will soon level up again, I guess. What do we have here? Leather cloak, iron short sword, iron short sword. Don't need any of that. Oh, what was that? What happened here? A chaos pot did something chaotic to us. We are 10% corrupted now. I think if this uh, bar reaches 100%, we get a corruption. That's another ogre, a male ogre this time. And here we have a floating eye, being a bit of an item better. And we know that floating eyes paralyze you. Magic resistance, evades traps, superb swimmer. A mirror-like glint in the dark. And pinpricks on the back of your neck. Someone's watching. Once you close the distance, it regards you curiously, as if it might split you apart just to see your insides. It's possible Iris, uh, it's impossible Iris now narrows. I think there is an apostrophe missing here at, um, at its. Just for the note, uh, a little typo, the apostrophe is missing at, uh, at the word its. So uh, maybe we can just add that to the to the to, to the list of the of the reports that we'll make after the stream is over. We got paralyzed when we killed it, but well, we killed it, and we get an eagle rune. What does the eagle rune do? We will find out. I think we will use this eagle rune on our. On the axe, on the, oh, no, no, no. I think eagle, that sounds like speed maybe. Let's put the eagle rune on the boots. What happened? Provides plus two perception. Aha, now our boots give us plus two perception. How would I compare Adam to Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup? Adam, in my eyes, is more of a traditional role-playing game. I play Adam for the atmosphere to uh, to um, experience a great adventure, and uh, I kind of tend to role play my characters in Adam a bit more. Crawl, on the other hand, the main reason why I played Crawl so ridiculously often is because it's a more competitive game. Uh, you can win it in a lot less time. It has particular challenges that uh, are well designed for competi competitive gameplay and. Uh, yeah, I, I really love both games. If I should name my two favorite games of all times, it's definitely Adam and Crawl. But I love them for very different reasons. So if you're more of um, 
of a fan of storytelling games of um of um how do you say of uh, developing the character of uh of your uh, of your of of your um yeah, the personality of your character then then adam is the the perfect game for you which reigns supreme <laughs> i must choose <laughs> Oh God, I cannot. <laughs> That's like asking a parent which is your, who is your favorite child. It doesn't work. <laughs> I, I cannot. I, I surrender to this question. I'm sorry. <laughs> there are indeed Adam speedruns. I, I did a turn count speedrun, more or less speedrun a while ago, and I bet it, uh, I think, somewhere around 20,000 turns, which was... Um, I, it can be done a lot faster, of course. It can be done a lot faster. There are people who do uh, insane challenges in Adom as well. But um, yeah, crawl, crawl also have, has this competitive aspect due to the the tournament that takes place at least once a year, where um, the well-known players play in teams and in solo ranking against each other. There is nothing of that kind in Adom, I think. Yeah, Adam is very roleplay like, and I think that won't change because that's um, that's also the um, the ideal of uh, Thomas Biscop. Wait a second. I need a little more space on the ch ah. What did I do? Mispicked. Damn, this, the chat is too small on my window over here. I have to increase that so I can. Yeah, the question is always um, um, real-time speedrun or turn count speedrun. I think both has been done, but I never try to real-time speedrun Adam. That, that that's just not my style of playing the game. Uh, website to learn more about uh, DCSS. No website, but I have actually recorded all my games from the last tournament, and I intend to upload them on the on the, on the YouTube channel over the next weeks. I just have to edit them because they're all three or four hours long, so I cannot just upload them the way they are, and I'm a bit too lazy to do that recently. Um, in this tournament, I played 35 games. I won uh, or 34 games, I think, and I won 21 of them including all kinds of uh, different competitive challenges like um, a turn count speed round below 20,000 turns and uh, several 15 runes wins, several particularly challenging uh, uh, character classes. Yeah, I will definitely... Uh, it motivates me even further to finally edit this vi these videos. I will, <laughs> I will try to get that done during the next week and upload the first games. <laughs> Yeah, both games are totally fantastic for very, very different reasons. There are people who just enjoy uh, either single one of them for, for these reasons, and there are people like me who, uh, who really like both. <laughs> Thanks for the motivation. Maybe that's exactly what I need uh, to, to finally upload these videos. Yeah, there are some really challenging combos I played. Like, for example, I played a Felid Delver, which is super hard to win. And uh, I played a, deep, played a Deep Dwarf Abyssal Knight without converting to another god. And it, exciting runs. It's, it's really exciting. And it was a great tournament. And I think also from, from, from the gameplay quality is decent. I, I finished... Uh, 22nd in the single player rating and we got uh, the second place w with the team so I, I roughly know how to play the game so uh, if you uh, learn a thing or two from it, it it's, it's not the worst you could learn I, I hope so at least <laughs> yeah yeah ultra violent 4 written as well as on uh, on youtube he's a very good player he has excellent educational uh, content absolutely recommend checking out ultra and he's also a very nice guy so uh what did i want to do here i think there was something i wanted to do here in the inventory oh ah, yeah i think we just used the rune <laughs> that's it i think we just uh, uh got the rune on our boots and now our 
our perception increased a little bit, which is actually pretty cool. Oh no, yet again, an ogre threat room. That's kind of dangerous. I think we rather retreat into the corridor so they don't get throw their rocks at us all at once. That's a bit threatening, but they don't harm us, which is a bit surprising. I mean, I mean these are ogres. They should be kind of strong. Okay, they are. They are. We have to retreat. We are down to 50% HP. Can we outrun them? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Where are we? Here. Where are the stairs? The stairs are pink. Up here. Up here they are. Okay, I think we try to retreat. No, that's the downstairs. That's not good. The upstairs over here. That's very bad. We need to somehow run around these ogres, I think. Let's try to go past this guy. Maybe he can distract the ogres for a while. And we regenerate slowly. Is there any way to stay here and just regenerate? I don't want to fight them now. I, I just walk up and down, which is a bit stupid, but um, it's the best strategy I can come up with at the moment. Yeah, that was a horrible place for an explosive trap indeed. And I wish I had a W5 or something like that or... A, a kind of a weight command that doesn't force me to do this ridiculous dance here. And the ogre is also not very clever. He had the chance to engage us there, but he didn't take it. And we... Oh! Do, oh, do you see that? We chopped off the arm and the arm is not visible anymore. You actually see the... 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 the, the, the <laughs> The, the, the chopped off arm on the on the sprite of the ogre. Holy moly. That's horrible. Let's kill him. But he has just one arm. Oh my god, that's brutal. <laughs> Here's the right arm of the ogre. Oh my god. That's pretty gruesome. Let us regenerate our HP first. But how horrible was that? We chopped off the arm and the arm was literally gone. <laughs> you got these cute little comic sprites and then we just chop off the limbs. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a bit funny, I think. <laughs> Holy moly. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can chop off some more ogre arms. <laughs> and we'll try to retreat uh, here. Need to kill this guy quickly, so we can return into the corridor. Okay, kill this guy. Oh no, oh no, we're surrounded by two of them. That's dangerous. Oh, that's very dangerous. Hopefully we can kill this guy quickly. Oh, no, 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 not good. Ouch. We are in trouble. Any way to pray? Pick up all items. Jump. Drink the potion. Which potion do we have? I think we might die here. That's not so good. <sighs> potion of confusion juice. Can we throw the potion of confusion juice at the ogre? We don't want to drink it. Pick up. Jump. Can we put it into our ranged slot? No, we cannot. Can we do it on our weapon? Coated it. We coated our weapon with confusion juice. Yeah, that doesn't look good. Let's... Let's now get one hit point from from this. Oh, we confused him. That's good. If we can quickly kill him now, that would be very, very advantageous. No! Oh, God. We survived it. 70 HP. And now we got confused? Because we stepped on the confusion tab? No, did we? Aye, aye, aye. That's close. But I think we will reach the stairs. Okay, this guy is hostile. Kill him. Good, we got him. Let's heal. 
and go upstairs. Oh, that was close. Holy moly, that was really close. So now let's just regenerate with our funny dwarf dance. Whew, lucky I, uh, I remembered this, this potion. Uh, they have to implement a command to uh, stand and regenerate. This is a little bit ridiculous what we're doing here. Yeah, these ogres. That was the first that was the first really dangerous situation in the game. Woohoo! Dangerous situation. <laughs> Yay. Wait a second. So Yeah, he went absolutely mad. <laughs> so, we're back at full HP. Okay, Ogres. Ready for the next round? Here we come. Ouch. Okay, they can now throw the rocks from the second row, apparently. From the, from the back row. Come on, kill him. Excellent. And I will just play it very safe and retreat now. Regenerate before we go back for the next ogres. We kill two of them, that's very good. We almost leveled up also. Just seeing it. We're very close to reach level five. Got him. But still no level five. We can get it from the items. Is that iron battle axe? Nope. And this was the level up? Yes, this was it. And we take this level up directly. We absolutely need to become stronger. But what do we want to increase with this level up? Um, maybe our armor talent. What can we do here? Improves your dodge value by another 10% while wearing medium armor. We absolutely want that. We need to take less damage. Improve dodging. And this here improves your protection value by 15%. We also learn that we are getting down the path here. That's another 10%. Got this, and here you must advance to level 6 to learn this skill. We are not yet level 6, but I think these points for dodging and uh, also for, um, for, for, for protection will really help. That's with this thing, yeah. Also, we take this talent, which gives us an increased uh, to hit chance by 10%. Excellent. So, now we should be significantly stronger than before. But we also can use the mundane talent and maybe increase our athletics a little bit further. Dexterity up. Or jumping strength. No, 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 no. Dodge value plus three. That sounds excellent. We learned that. Dodge plus three is perfect. So, we are stronger now. Let's go. See if we see a difference in the fight against this ogre. Yes, absolutely. Down he goes. Heavy club, sling, ogre's right arm. Oh, that's so horrible. Let's use it to regenerate though. All the stuff on the ground. I think the monsters are not yet very clever. They do some pretty strange movements from time to time. If they wanted, they could do a little better, I think. Can we kill this guy? I hope we can, yeah. But we are already a little bit injured, so let's be careful. And kill it. Yes, we killed this one too. Perfect. 
this for healing and even more. Wh what do we have here? Soft leather gloves? But they, they don't have these stats. That can't be the truth. Okay, they have no stats at all. Okay. Health. Let's regenerate a little bit over here. That's a goblin chieftain. Goblin chieftains are actually new. This one has gained experience from many fights. As evinced by the scars on his face and his one clever eye. Strings of bones from defeated cave dwellers adorn its neck and chest. And its tribesmen don't stray far behind it. A lot of mithril on his armor and oh large mithril hammer and a mithril chainmail. Okay, okay. The mithril chainmail is definitely an upgrade. The mithril hammer, very interesting as well. We have put quite a lot of experience in learning uh in learning axes now. Do we also want to train hammers? 1d10 plus 5 is significantly better weapon. But also the size problem, just like the axe. Um, plus 3 damage, plus 3 to hit. Still, that's a nice weapon. I'd like to definitely swap our armor though. So let's unequip this plus three minus three plus five ah what happened tapped out accidentally this is minus two plus seven it's better in every single respect that's perfect let's equip this armor no it's not suitable suitably sized for dwarf elf oh damn why the iron chain mill works but the mithril ch chain mill doesn't oh that's a bummer that's little bit disappointing oh come on oh damn size points four and this one has size points wait a second 16 what does that mean size medium size small it is small size oh there are sizes for for every weapon and every armor, our dwarf is too big for this armor. We can get this one in a bigger size. Ah, now I see. Ah, that's interesting. That's very interesting. Let's convert it into experience. But still, that was sad. I, I hope that we finally got a really nice upgrade and then, no, nah, was nothing. I've got the feeling since our level up we got a lot stronger. I feel a lot safer now as well. Who are you? An orc? An, a male orcish orc. Okay. That reminds me a little bit of the hearthling we just met. I think... <laughs> not quite sure what that's supposed to mean, an orcish orc. <laughs> Here we have a, a male ogre, but it's not an ogreish ogre. The slings were just too small, so if we find a bigger sling, we could probably use it. It was not that we cannot use slings at all, it just was we couldn't use these particular slings. And that's interesting. All enemies drop these items, but not all items are suited for every character. For example, if this ogre dropped a sling, I'm pretty sure it would not be small. And that's a nice mechanic, I think. This rock, for example, is large. Maybe that's also the reason why we couldn't use these rocks, because it's a large rock and we are just 
medium sized or something like that. Let's try that. It's not suitable for the Olaf. Yeah, because it's large. That's the problem. Um, wait. I'm also not sure if gold has already got any kind of function in the game. We have to find that out later too. No idea where to go. Yeah, I have an idea. Just go over here in this direction where we haven't been yet. Mr. Auto Explore function. Why do I have a... Oh, wait, wait. Who's that? A zombie? No, it's a ghoul. It is indeed a ghoul. What once was a person is now a claw to mockery of decomposed flesh. An itcherous secretion drips from its fingers, now twisted and sharp at the tips. Its mouth opens, jaw barely attached to the skull, t taking sure hungry steps towards its prey. You will not eat us, Mr. Ghoul. Never. Here, take this. Bam. Nice. The ghoul goes down. Get grouped here. <coughs> yeah, I hope so too. It is definitely a very interesting mechanic. And that's so far generally my impression of the game. There are very interesting mechanics, but uh, we have to see how they get uh, used for the game. Some of them seem to be, it seems like they just don't matter for this particular character. And uh, in the long term, there should be interesting mechanics for every character in every game, ideally. Uh, the problem is now also that the minimap is bugged. We, c we see the whole map. I don't know where I haven't been yet. The auto explore doesn't function at the moment, so I just have to walk around through the level blindly and hope that I, I will find the right areas. And all the enemies here are neutral. That's interesting. No, not all of them. It was really just random. Is that again a centipede? No, it's a claw bug. That's why it's so fast. Did you see it? It attacked us four times in a row. Could it possibly be just one creature creating that clatter of innumerable legs? Tick, 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 clack, 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 clack. Every chitinous fold of its uh, ca uh, carapace falls its legs as they trail you. Its jaws click three more times, salivating with uh, with thoughts of digesting a, digesting a hero. No, 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 no. No chance. You will not digest us. Clawback. Uh, as every clawback, it punches through our armor. Okay, he was a hidden door. Ah, take a look at this. We found a key. Interesting. Once again, very interesting. And now, for whatever reason, we could do a little bit of auto-exploring, but just for a second. These guys beat each other up. They're both neutral to us. Let's see who dies. Maybe he drops some stuff. Come on. <laughs> they almost killed each other. But just one of them. Two guys go in and the red comes out. <laughs> it's funny that the red won this fight. I, I would not have bet on the red. I think the, the, the most um, annoying gameplay bug we found so far is the auto explore and map things. So uh, it's sometimes it's very tedious to, to scout the levels. But what do we have here? A wall with a face. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> these are the small details they still have to work on. But we can talk to this wall. Let's do that. A green devil face is on that wall. Oh, holy moly. That's a pretty threatening green devil face. Oh, great graphics. All of these graphics I saw so far are excellently well done with a lot of love for detail and great atmosphere. You face the relief mural of a green devil face. Its huge mouth. Again, here is no apostrophe. The apostrophe is from its. I don't think they like them. Is it, I think there has to be an apostrophe, doesn't there have to be one? Or am I wrong? I don't know. Its huge mouth is wide open and the darkness beckons you to climb inside it. A cold shiver runs down your back while you stare at the menacing face. A voice whispers in your mind. I am waiting for you. Come. Oh, that's the stuff of nightmares. It's horrible. Resist the call. Smash the accursed devil's face. Climb into the black gaping hole. Or turn away in terror. What do we do? Ah, okay, okay. Then I was just wrong. Go inside. You think we should go inside? Oh, we have to find out what happens when we go inside. I think so too. Oh. Let's go inside. It's a... Uh, <laughs> Just like whenever a character reaches D50 uh, for the first time in the original Adom and you get the opportunity to step into the Chaos Gate, of course you do it. Uh, climb into the gaping black hole. What happens? You start climbing into the mouth. A feeling of intense dread fills your body. Could this be salvation or doom? Continue or turn away in terror? Uh-oh. Into the breach. Continue or turn away. No, no, no. It could be salvation, it could be doom. We don't know. Continue. Scary, it is scary indeed. Continue, we've got two times continue and once turn away. I count down from 10. All the way in, three, one, 10, nine, Eight, seven, three, two, six, five, four, three, two, one. Continue. Oh my God! It is four times go in and three times go out. I'm not sure if it's a good idea, but the go in fraction wins. We have to continue climbing into the mouth. Let's do that. Oh my God! Houston, continue climbing into the mouth. Continue. Yeah. What happens? Halfway into the mouth, you sense an icy void looming in the dark recessions of the foully cavity. Even darker whispers tempt you to complete your move and fully immerse yourself in the pitch black hole. Fully climb into the mouth, turn away in terror. I'm feeling pretty terrified. Oh God, guys, what do we do? They are really trying to stop us. I think so too. Oh my god, <laughs> it's horrible! <laughs> oh god! <laughs> aye, aye, aye. I mean, uh. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> is there a chance to get a good result from it? Or is it certain death? That's the question. Suspense. Experiment. Probably there is a chance for a great result. We have to find out. I have to try at least once. You will hate yourself later if you don't resolve it. Dying is the best part of roguelikes. And we are already almost at the end of the stream anyways. We have to try it. Come on, guys. We will climb completely. We Now we are so far in. We cannot chicken out now. We are a dwarf, not a chicken. Let's do it. Fully climb into the mouth. Oh no! <laughs> oh, damn! <sighs>
Another Dola the male level 5 lawful neutral mountain dwarf fighter was killed by a green devil face on level 3 of the caverns of chaos. Oh no, it was, it, it, I kind of expected it. They, they really warned us, they did their best to warn, <laughs> warn us, but but Jorlov was a, a, a brave dwarf. Some would call him a reckless dwarf, but I call him brave. Oh my god. And we reached the first position in the high scores. Let's return to the main menu. Here he is. Five, 3,531 points. Oh my god. Yeah, guys, what do you think? What was your, uh, your impression of Ultimate Adam? Kevins of Chaos up to this point. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I can say for myself, there are some interesting features. There are some mechanics that I'm looking forward to see in a in a in a more complex environment. The one thing I am mm, largely missing so far is this this RPG feeling of Adom that we were talking about. This feeling of uh, having more than just a character trying to, uh, to reach a, a goal in the game. It is, it is a, a living character experiencing a great adventure. That's yet a little bit missing because a lot of the gameplay was just walking through the level and killing monsters. What I loved were these dialogue situations. What I really loved was the situation in which we died. Uh, this was atmosphere. That's the direction I, I want for this game to take. And I'm, I'm positive that the, dev the developers, the creator and the team will exactly do that. Yeah, wait for the overworld. It's going to be important. But also these, these little moments like this one. We say, okay, that's not just a game. That's a, a story that is happening. It's work in progress. It looks promising. Indeed. Indeed. It absolutely is. And I think from time to time we will try to be a part of this progress. Try to find out what already works, what doesn't, didn't work yes, yet. We met a couple little bugs on our playthrough. I will report these bugs in the, in, probably on the... Uh, on the on the steam group and and we will see this game developing into what hopefully will be an amazing game i absolutely want to see more of this too <laughs> atmosphere was great but more quests and special events yeah nostradamus i completely agree with you that's also exactly what i am thinking i will start another game hi corin welcome to the stream by the way but i cannot start another game today is already almost eight o'clock, and I said uh, eight o'clock is the what I what, what I try to do uh, for today, because uh, on Mondays I have to get up, up pretty quickly, uh, pretty early. I still have to do a little bit of a workout today that I haven't done yet. I think we played almost three hours now. That was a very fun stream, and I, actually, to be honest, I, I have to get a little used to these longer streams too. I, I realized uh, the longer the stream got, the more mistakes I met when I uh, made when when reading these texts. <laughs> That's uh, what, how I realized. Okay, concentration is probably going a little bit down. <laughs> Anyways, it was so much fun to to to, 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 to explore the game together with you guys today. Uh, I, I I love the uh, interaction on the stream and everybody's cheering for the characters and uh, and sometimes we just uh, move into completely different directions like when we play, talked about the comparison of crawl and Adon. that's something i wouldn't come up with if i just played the game for youtube I, thanks a lot get lane thanks a lot everybody i i absolutely enjoyed it too it was definitely a highlight of my weekend and uh yeah the next stream will be on tuesday eight o'clock central european time 8 p.m but on Tuesday, we will get back to uh, Tiffany, our character in the old crawl, in the old Adam. Apart from that, I promise that I will at least try to edit the first crawl video 
from the tournament this week. The first game I played in the tournament was directly a 15 runes run with extended late game and I remember that there were some, some breathtaking exciting moments in that game. Yeah, by the way, uh, for this crawl videos, there are some uh, videos where I talk with my teammates about tough situations and I have some amazing players on my team. And uh, you can definitely learn a lot from that, from, from the different opinions of the different players. Yeah, that's my uh, plan for the next week. We will stream Adam at least twice with Tiffany and I will upload at least the first videos of the first run. Oh, Corin, thanks a lot for the subscription. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, <laughs> yeah, guys. But for now, let me say one last time. Thanks to everybody who tuned in today. I'm almost sure this was probably the, 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 the biggest chat we had so far since I started streaming. It's totally amazing. It's, thanks a lot for that. Also, thanks for everybody who will see this video on YouTube once it's uploaded. And uh, yeah, next stream, Tuesday, 8 p.m. Central European time. Until then, bye everybody. <laughs>